Hello everyone, my name is Ari, and welcome to my LVUI tutorial. Now in this guide, we're going to start with a basic introduction of what LVUI is as an add-on. Then we're going to go over basic setup, say you just install the add-on, we're going to look at what it will be like as a first time. Then we're going to go over my personal UI, where I have things, what I use it for. Then we're going to have a question and answer selection from my previous video. And then finally, we're going to end it with a slideshow of all my current options uh, for my LVUI as of now. So let's start with an introduction to LVUI. What actually is this add-on? So what is LVUI? Well, it's a complete user interface overhaul. And what that means, a user interface is what you see on your screen. It's your action bars, your mini map, your quest log, your health bar, your target frame, your party frames. It's everything on your screen um, and the way it's presented to you. How does it look to you and where are things located? And what LVUI does is it allows you to not only move everything exactly where you want it, but change color schemes, change the way things look. Um, it lets you have much easier access visually to different cooldowns. Um, it lets you take better track of your party and your raid frames. Um, it's a extremely nice add-on to have. Um, the problem with LVUI, not necessarily the problem with LVUI itself, but the problem with making a tutorial for LVUI is its vastness. Um, there are still things I'm positive that I don't know about it and I've used it for years now and I love it and I would say I'm pretty well versed in it but I guarantee you there's a lot of things that I still don't know and because of that I don't think it's possible for anyone to make a guide a reasonable guide that is that um, accurately demonstrates everything that you can do with the add-on it's just too big um, so this is just going to be my my best go at it, so to speak. I'm going to try and do the main points, like we're going to go over how to move things, how to organize your cooldowns and your action bars, your party frames. I'm going to give some suggestions for placement on different items, um, but I'm guaranteed not going to be able to answer everything uh, through this video anyway. Which is why I would like to encourage all of you to join my Discord server. Um, I will have the link in the description. Um, it's much easier to get a hold of me through Discord than it is YouTube comments um, or uh, DMs or whatever it is that you use currently. Um, so if you do have a question or something, uh, just hop into my Discord server and shoot me a message on there. I guarantee you I will get back to you a lot quicker. But anyway, uh, that's basically what LVUI is in a nutshell. Um, and I think the best way to start this is we're going to dive into a brand new setup. What does the game look like if you just installed the add-on and you don't really know what to do? We're going to go over um, where it puts things and kind of a good starting point, whether you're a healer, tank, or a DPS. So let's jump right into a basic installation and setup for LVI. Alright, so, let's say you just installed the add-on. Um, for this purpose, I'm just going to make a new character. Um, totally random. Is there a randomize? I don't know. Uh, let's make... Let's make an orc. Why not? Make an orc rogue, because that makes sense. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do one of those. We'll cut... Sorry, that was my phone. Um, I also would like to apologize too before we get too far into this. Um, I am still really sick. Um, I have strep throat again for like the second time in two months, so I'm feeling just dandy. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and randomize our orc. That's actually not too bad. Give him a random old name Rassam Wolk. Wrath of the Lich King. <laughs> okay. We're gonna make that character and we're gonna dive right in. And I'm gonna show you exactly what's gonna pop up on the screen the first time you log in with uh, LVUI installed. And LVUI is gonna try and run through, run you through kind of a little setup tutorial on its own. Um, it's not very in-depth at all, uh, and it doesn't really do much aside from 
change colors and the healer um, the basic healer setup they give you is a little bit different but the tank the caster and the melee are all pretty much the same um, but if this would load this blue bar boss man gets me every time okay <laughs> so um, you can ignore the panel on the right side of my screen that says details that's my damage and healing meter uh, that's not important for this but when you log in, this is what you're going to get presented with, this little LVI installation. Now you can either go through it and um, kind of answer the questions it asks you and do setup based on what it tells you to do, or you can simply hit skip process. Um, so we're just actually going to just skip it for now, um, because I should hopefully cover everything that that goes over and a lot more. Um, also, it's going to give you this little tip thing. You just want to hit disable and hide, and then you won't have to worry about that popping up again. I'm going to go ahead and throw this just up here. We don't need that. But all right, so here's your basic um, LVI setup. This is what it looks like. Um, and it's kind of a lot to take in right away because you don't know where everything is. Um, your action bars are really bizarre now. Uh, your health bar has completely moved down to the bottom of your screen. Um, I think my mouse is hidden so you can't see it, but my guy flashes when I go over my health bar. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the first thing I want us to do is we're going to do slash E-L-V-U-I. When we hit enter, that's going to bring up the menu. And this is where all the magic happens. This is how you move things, set things up, change colors, um, organize your action bars, set your key bindings, manage your party frames. This is where everything happens. And the very, very first thing that I want to go over is moving things. Um, so if you notice up at the top right here, this toggle anchors bar, if you click it, you're going to notice you get this crazy grid screen with all these blue icons everywhere. Um, and this is what allows you to move things on a grid-based system, so you can get very precise with it. Um, it allows you to, if you're totally anal retentive like I am, it allows you to place everything exactly where you want it so it's perfectly symmetrical. Some people don't like that. Um, I do, and this is something that I probably spend more time on than I should. But when you're in the screen, um, you can see each of these boxes is labeled with what it is. So, uh, this is a talking head frame. That's what pops up for quests and world quests in Legion. Um, you can move that wherever you want. Uh, down here we have our health. Uh, we can put that up here. You have your target frame. And if you notice too, right off the bat by default, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of these are anchored together. So if I move my player frame, my cast bar is gonna move. Um, you just grab the cast bar and you can drag it off and then it's not going to be anchored anymore and you can uh, place your cast bar in the middle if you want um, I like to have mine right in the middle and I like to have it a little bit bigger than normal so it's easy to see uh, excuse me again <coughs> oh I'm just not feeling good today um, but uh, yeah I generally like to have the player frame and the target frame right here in the center of my screen by my uh, action bars so it's all kind of generalized in one local area and it's easy to see at a quick glance um, obviously you have your mini map up in the corner you can move that I used to have mine down here in the corner but recently I kind of overhauled my DPS UI again which I will show you um, I will be showing you both my healer and my DPS UI um, but yeah I recently redid it and I think it works a lot better but also here are your raid frames your 40 man raid frames your party frames um, Obviously, if you're a healer, you're going to want these in the middle somewhere, uh, like right over here, and you'll want your action bars either right underneath or to the side. That, yet again, is something that we'll go over in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and move these back here, and we're going to move on to our action bars. So that's these things right down here. And this is where all your spells go. You should be familiar with this. I shouldn't have to explain what they do. Um, but LVI allows you to customize them uh, completely. Um, and you don't need another add-on like Bartender or something to let you do that. Also, a really nice feature with the action bars in LVI is the ability to keybind without going into your, um, your escape menu and doing it the hard way. You literally select that option, make sure that you have character specific keybinds selected, 
and you can mouse over one and let's say for some reason I'm gonna hit escape to clear it and let's say I want it on E. I just press the E key while my mouse is over it and that is now bound to the E key. And if you make a mistake, just escape will clear your binding and that's pretty much how you do that. But to organize them a little bit better, we're gonna do slash L U I again and here is the menus for the action bars and this might be a little overwhelming the first time you come into it but trust me it's not all these little sliders you see are the amount of buttons in that bar the size of the bar uh, the spacing of the bar the width all of that stuff it's all dimensional options so it really allows you to get specific in what you're looking for um, so let's go ahead and toggle anchors and we're gonna pull bar one up and you notice five and three are anchored to it. We're just gonna drag them back so they're not anchored. And I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way because we don't need to worry about that right now. We're just gonna have bar number one right here. So that's pretty good, you know? That's a pretty basic setup. What if you want it to be tinier? Uh, this buttons per row option right here in the middle, you can drag that, put it at six, and you see it's half the width but now it's got two rows in it. So you can create little blocks of action bars for different things. I used to actually in Draenor have two big blocks of action bars on my screen. I'd have one on the left and one on the right. And the one on the left would be all of my combat spells, all my attacks, all of my <laughs> cooldowns and stuff. And then on the other side I would have things like mounts and uh, revives and summon stones and all that crap. So I would kind of separate them. Recently what I've been doing is making a small one like this and making it a little bit bigger so it's easy to see and then putting it right in the middle of my screen. So let's say we'll put it right here and then we'll have our target right to the right of it and then our player frame just to the left. The reason I do this is it's much easier to see your cooldowns that way. Yes, you can mess with weak auras or another um, add-on like tell me when to track add-ons, but I really don't like messing with those I'm not very savvy with the whole um, Coding thing um, So I like to just use LVY for what it is and just have extra large action bars right in the middle And then I can see how long all my cooldowns are um, the other thing the other big thing that people ask about is my party frame slash raid frames and my chat boxes and the first thing I want to address is the chat boxes. Um, a lot of times you see people with only one side on and LVY by default comes with both sides activated which I think is too much. You don't really need two, um, <coughs> excuse me again, wow. You don't really need two chat bars or boxes. So we're gonna go to the chat options and we're going to go to panels and right here you're gonna have an option called panel backdrop and it should be show both by default and what we're going to want to do is whatever side you want i'm preferable to the left i'm going to show left only so you notice the right one completely disappears and now this is our only chat box some people might want it on the right so you just click right only and it's over there but i like it on the left so we're going to leave it on the left at the section of the video where we go over my personal UI I'm going to show you a cool trick with this that gives it doesn't give any performance increase but it gives a, a visual enhancement to a part of your UI which I think is pretty cool last one is your party raid frame things so when you go on this large menu you're going to find unit frames and you can click this little plus next to it to make this drop down menu and this is going to give you a separate menu for every single different kind of frame you have so your own health frame which is this one right here uh your target frame so if i'm going to target this guy sitting down that would be options for his um target of your target so say he was targeting somebody I would see who he is targeting if I place that underneath his health bar um, but the big ones are your party frames and your raid frames now we're gonna have to go into this a little bit on my max level character so I can get in a dungeon and show you what it does um, I can't really get into a party or a raid frame as a level one uh, orc stabber so that part's gonna have to wait till a little bit 
Um, so the last thing I want to touch in with a basic setup, um, since we've gone over how to move things, we've gone over your action bars, we've gone over your chat box, um, I want to go over your profile management, and that's how you... Um, oh, speaking of which, yep, there's his target right there. I forgot we moved it up there. His target's right up there. So now we know that he's targeting the monk. But anyway, profile management. So we're going to go LVY again. And we're going to minimize that so it's out of the way. And we're going to click on this profiles. Now this is really cool. This is a hidden gem within LVY, as I called it um, earlier. I, maybe that was in a different video. But LVY is pretty cool as it allows you to have separate it's not going to allow me right now because i am level one but it's going to allow you to set up and save separate configurations for different specializations of your class that's how i have a separate uh, setup for my healer and a separate setup for my dps because if i didn't have that there's no way i would be changing back and forth as frequently um, that's really cool, and we will go into that extremely in detail later on. I, I will also provide you with the download links to all of my custom UIs so you guys can play with that. Um, but basically, you when you make a UI and you edit it, you're going to automatically have a profile for it. So you'll see your name, your realm, and if you have other characters, you'll be able to copy from another character. So. Let's copy my mage's profile and watch what happens. So you see things change pretty drastically. Um, let's reset it. There we go. So you see how this is all perfectly like there's my target frame, target, target, my, ca my cast bar, or actually that's my power bar. Um, we go into toggle anchors. You can see how I have everything set up. I have my debuffs right underneath so I can see them and I have them rather large so they're easy to track. Um, the stance bar is because of my druid. I have all of my like my bear form, my cat form. That's all spread out right underneath there. Um, bar three is my action bars, and that's where I put all my cooldowns and trinkets and things that I need to track. So that's larger than the other bars, which I don't need. To, like I don't need to have a bar um, and be able to see wrath. Wrath doesn't cost anything. I don't need to use it at particular times. I do need to track empowerments, but that's a totally separate thing. I don't need to even, like, realistically, I don't even need to see the action bar with Wrath on it, or Lunar Strike, or any of that, or, uh, what is this, uh, Shiv, what, I don't play a rogue, so I don't know what they do, um, but your cooldown bar is gonna be your important one, and it's empty right now because obviously I have nothing in it, um, and you know what, I just thought of something really quick too, um, two little tips really fast to get you going with this a little quicker we're gonna go back to what was my guy's name I don't remember what his name was that one well we're just gonna reset it so we go back to the default setup um, because it, it gets a little irritating um, typing slash LVI a lot um, so I'm gonna show you a little trick to that so we're gonna do it once to oops we're gonna do it once to open the menu and we're going to go to, um, let's see, is it data texts? Yes, data texts. The option right there. You're going to go under the panels option. And you're going to go to left chat. And you're going to, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, let's take the order hall. And we're going to change that to LVI config, which stands for configuration. We're going to select that. And we're going to close the window. Now if you notice down here, there's a little button that says LVI now. Click it and it opens up the menu. So now you don't have to do the slash type every time you want to open it. Last thing really fast, you're going to go to your action bars, you're going to select micro bar and you're going to enable it. That's up here. That's your start menu, that's everything you need, your character pane. I do not know why LVI has it disabled, but it does and that's something that you need to turn on. So you can toggle anchors and you can just drag it down. Let's put it right in the middle of our screen. There we go. So those are the really, really basics of this. Now we're gonna dive into my own personal UI and get a little bit more into the nitty gritty of why I have things where they are, set up the way they are, and um, show you exactly how I did it. 
um, I'll show you the font options I used, uh, a lot of the media settings, you know, that kind of stuff. And I'll show some video of it in action. I'm actually, I'm hoping I have recording of my mage on Mediv, which I got a pretty epic drop from Mediv, which I think was pretty exciting. I ran back and forth in my basement. I was so pumped. But yeah, um, that concludes the basic setup. I know it's not much, but the add-on being so big, uh, a lot of it comes with personal exploration. Uh, make mistakes, go experiment with it. Um, put things in random spots, see what works for you. You know, I can't tell you exactly how you should have it because everybody's different. Um, but yeah, that's it for that. Let's head over to my UI and I'm gonna show you all of the stuff that I have. Okay, so this is my UI. Um, we briefly looked at it just a minute ago when I was messing with the Rogue. Um, but this is how I have things set up for a DPS character. Um, caster, if you want to get specific. I really don't like to play melee. So, um, this is probably not too much different from a melee, but um, this is more set up for a caster anyway. Um, but this is what I have. And... This is going to be a little bit more tricky for me to get across everything that I want to about how it works and like why I have things where they are, but I'm going to do my best. And I'm going to start with uh, pointing out where I have everything put. So I guess we're just going to start at the left of the screen and work our way around to the right side of the screen. We're going to start with the party frames. As a DPS, it's not necessarily important to see your party frames. Um, you do need to be able to see them, but you don't really need to be interactive with them unless you are a, uh, number one, a healer, which is very important, but two, if you are a DPS class that has a battle res, you need to be able to have quick access to it, be able to click very quickly on who you need to get up. Um, but if you're not either of those, it's not super important, you know? You should be able to see it, but it's not something that you need to have right in the middle of your screen. Uh, right underneath that is my my menu bar, the micro bar, as LVY calls it. That's just where you find your character pane, your spellbook, talents, uh, guild uh, menu, your dungeon journal, all that stuff. Uh, it's right above my chat frame, which is my only chat frame. Um, I'll explain what I have with the other one here in a second, although you could probably work it out for yourself. Um, excuse me. Man, I'm just not feeling good today. But... That's my chat frame, and right underneath it, I have a couple little data texts, like my gold count, and there's that LBUI button that I showed you in the beginning part of the guide. Um, I just use that to quickly gain access to the menu so I don't have to type it every time. Just to the right of the, the chat box, you're going to notice two bars. Normally there are three, but since this character is um, not currently tracking a reputation, you're not going to see the third bar, but those are my... Uh, things like my XP bar, my reputation bar. The two that you can see, the beige colored one, that is my artifact power bar, and the orange one is my honor bar. And that's just kind of a nice little area to keep track. You can have all four next to each other, and they're all different colors. XP is blue, rep is green, artifact is beige, and honor is orange. So it's a nice consolidated little area to keep track of it all. Just next to that, you see I have a tiny little action bar with my potions in the top, and then right underneath it I have my enchant and my disenchant. Uh, I am an enchanter on this character, and I just like to have it out on an action bar, so I don't need to go into my spellbook to get access to it every time. Also, I want to remind everyone that this is not my main character, this isn't what I'm rating on, so I don't have everything exactly to like the most optimal setting. Um, it's just kind of more ease of use over function at this point. Uh, my druid's a little bit different in the way it's set up, but yeah. And then right next to that, oh, is you're going to watch, um, I believe this is a wipe in Kara. This trash is deadly. Um, but uh, right next to those little action bars, you can't see them right now, but I have my class bar down there, which is probably not the best place to have it, if I am honest. That is where I see things like my arcane familiar, or my Rune of Power. When I pop Rune of Power, it shows me the duration of it. That's probably something that you're going to want to have more near the center of your screen where everything else is going on. So you can 
uh, track exactly where it's at and you know exactly like how much burst you can get out before it's gone uh, but that's where the class bar is um, keep going over to the left you're gonna see my health frame just to the left of my main cluster of action bars that's pretty straightforward right on top of my health frame is a very skinny little blue bar with four parts to it that's my arcane charges that lets me know uh, what charge level I'm at um, you'll also see if I target an enemy above their head I have another uh, four blue balls that light up and that lets me know how many uh, charges I have that one's not quite as necessary for me anyway um, I rely mostly on the one over my health bar um, but right next to that uh, there are two things there are my mana bar which is very important to an arcane mage that's because all of your rotation uh, matters around managing your your mana output and uh, regaining it correctly um, and right underneath that is the main cluster of action bars I have stuff where you'll find uh, cooldowns like Arcane Power, Mark of Alunith, my Unused Trinket, Rune of Power, Shimmer, Time Warp, Greater Invisibility, my Interrupt, which is very important, uh, Evocation, Ice Block. Uh, the important things that you want to know uh, the remaining cooldown on should be somewhere that you can see easily. Um, to the right of it, um, I'm not sure why I'm standing still. I'm going to fast forward this to where I'm not standing still. <laughs> To the right of that is my target frame. Uh, it's very self-explanatory. That's my target. That's where you see the health bar of whatever thing you're smacking in the face. Now underneath that uh, little middle cluster there, you're going to see some really small action bars. And earlier in the guide, I was saying how I don't need to see Wrath on my bars. Same for this. Like I don't need to see Arcane Blast. I know what it does. I don't need to track it. It has no cooldown. Same with Barrage, same with Missiles, same with Polymorph, uh, Spell Steel, Conjure Refreshment, Nether Tempest, like all of that stuff. You don't need to track it because it's always available on use. Um, so I have it minimized into a smaller action bar on the bottom because it's not necessarily important. If you keep going to the right, you're going to see the damage meter. Now what I've done here is I took the right chat panel and I enabled it and I resized it to fit my damage meter and on my druid you'll see um, I have my damage and my healing right next to each other and the chat panel offers this really nice crisp little backdrop just to make it look a little better it's not any performance gain like I said earlier but it just looks nicer you know um, and it's something that I enjoy one thing I forgot to mention, right underneath my main cluster of action bars is my debuffs. This is very important. You need to be able to see your debuffs. Uh, fights like Nithendra, how many stacks do you have before you get mind control? This trash, for example, uh, who's got the flamey spinny thing that ouches everybody really hard? You need to get out of the group with that, so you need to know when you have it. Uh, debuffs are very important, so I have them in the middle. They're larger than normal, so I can see them. So if we go above the damage in the healing menu, or meter, you'll see my tooltip. Uh, nothing else to say about that. <coughs> Keep going up and you're going to see my objective frame. Uh, that's pretty standard for LUI right under the minimap. Keep going up, you'll see my minimap. Um, I have the time and my friends list anchored to the bottom of that. Um, I will show you in the uh, LUI settings a little bit later in this section how I put them there and if you want to put something else there, um, how to do that. On my mini map, you see I have a little white button thing. That's a separate add-on called Binder that controls my uh, keybinds for different specs. That's really not part of this, but I will touch on it briefly at the end. And then you see my buffs up at the very top. And that's things like uh, your flask, your potions, your augment rune, your food. Uh, I'm holding a trap from Morose. So that's that. You'll see that up there. Um, so yeah, that's basically where I have everything set up and for my personal use, I've found that that's probably the best way I've seen so far to keep it all in the center um, to where I'm comfortable with it and I know what's happening and I can see everything easily. Um, I said earlier and I'll say it probably a dozen more times, this isn't the perfect way to do it and I'm not here to tell you the perfect way to do it. I'm just here to show you how to change things and how I like it. Um, you will have to play with this yourself. You have to explore, you have to m mess things up and fix them and find out what's 
gonna work best for you. You know, it's just all like self-discovery with this add-on. It's just so massive. Um, so yeah, so now let's cut over to my druid really quick and I will show you a couple of those things I mentioned like uh, the friends list and the clock and all those other things, the healing meter, right chat panel backdrop, all that jazz. So let's cut over real quick to that. Okay, so now we're on my druid. Um, right now I'm in resto spec healer and this is pretty much my complete UI. This is what I use for rating, for mythic plus, all of that uh, high-end content. And it's a little different than my mage setup. Uh, mainly, um, I don't have it all centered in the middle. Instead, I have this uh, set of four cooldowns up here. Those are the big ones that I need to keep track of. All the rest aren't necessarily super important. There are some that I do need to um, watch, like Swift Mend, um, but the rest, like maybe Wild Growth, but the rest are not as important. And the big gap I have in between these um, you can't see my mouse, so I'm trying to blink over them, but um, the big gap in between these is for my raid frames and my party frames. So actually, um, you know, I'm going to wait on that. So we're going to click the little button, open up our LVI, and um, one of the things I really like about this, what I think makes it so clean, is under general, we'll go to media, and default font, name font, combat text font, I have them all set to Expressway, which I think is a really clear, uh, elegant, nice font to see. It's not very pixely, it's not hard, it's got a kind of a soft feel to it, and it's really easy to read. Um, so what I did is I just selected all of these and then I hit apply font to all, and that literally puts that for everything, including uh, chat, your damage text, your um, messages, um, all the stuff. The only one that's not going to pop up under that is your nameplates. And nameplates you're going to have to set yourself. Um, so like, let's see, where is it? Enemy player frames, enemy NPC frames, like you have all these different options. Um, I have these set on my DPS. Uh, UI, not necessarily my healer UI because I don't really use a lot of um, nameplates when I'm healing. Um, mostly uh, concentrated in between where my frames are. So what I'm going to do is pop into Q and see if we can just get in a heroic dungeon. Let's see what the time is. Well, that should be actually pretty quick. Alright, I'm going to do a nifty little crossfade and I'll see you in the dungeon. Okay, so put us in the fastest heroic actually, which is probably a good thing. Um, and I'm not sure, this tank is probably geared judging by the way he's pulling already. Um, but if you notice, on my party frame, my little uh, health bars for everybody, you're going to see little purple squares and little green squares. And these are trackers for my different healing spells, like the purple squares are rejuvenation. And if you look closely, you can see that they slowly uh, deplete themselves. And that's the way I like to track uh, that hot on my targets. Um, the green square that you see, I just put it on the mage. That is my life bloom. And then if I regrowth him, you'll see another one at the bottom of his frame that is ticking a little faster. That is uh, the hot from regrowth. So I use all of these little different colored squares to manage my hots on targets. And the only other one that I can think of right now is this, which is Wild Growth. That puts that little orange one down in the corner. Um, so it might be a little hard to get used to right away, but just it comes with memorizing the colors and their locations, but it's a really, really clever way of tracking all of your cooldowns on targets. And you'll see that I do have two rejuvenation uh, squares, and that is because I'm running the germination talent for dungeons, which allows me to put two on a target, which is really nice. You'll also see that um, these four uh, cooldowns that I like to track are right above my party frames, and that's because 95% of my time is going to be spent looking at as I stand in something. It's going to be looking at uh, the party frames to manage everybody's health. And see, he just got feared, so I'm going to dispel him. 
because he didn't move out of the circle. Yeah, this group is pretty geared. Actually, the Demon Hunter is pretty geared. And thanks, guy. Couldn't even loot it. <laughs> oh, well. Um, but yeah, a big thing about the healer UI is having it set in an easy place for you to see what's going on. Now, I'm curious as to if he's going to push us here. You know what? Let's be a little ballsy. And, alright, come on. I need you to grab, grab the aggro, buddy. Come on, tank. There you go. There you go. Let's grab these guys. Now, I wouldn't recommend normally doing this, <laughs> but uh, it's only a heroic, so why can't I heal you? Thank you. Freaking line of sight me and stuff. Um, do you notice, since this is my healer UI also, um, the, the my own personal health bar and my party frames health bars are not in the center of the screen anymore they're kind of down in the bottom because they're actually not really important when you're doing this. Um, I'm not obviously DPSing stuff for my job, so what point is there me having a massive target frame in the center of my screen? Um, the center part with the party frame is just the most important thing, and that's what you're going to need to have. Also, you'll notice on the, the uh, right underneath my healing, uh, or my own personal health bar, you're gonna notice I have um, two little action bars and that has most of my consumables in it, like my augment runes, my um, lay torrent potions, my mass uh, res, my repair mount, my revive, my DPS pots uh, for fights like, I don't know, pre-pot like dragons or something, pushing a little extra damage, um, like food, that kind of stuff. So you can see how I have everything kind of, it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, the main point is everything important is in one area. The less time your eyes have to take to look around the screen to see different things, uh, the better you're going to perform. The, the more quickly you're gonna be able to react to things that boosh people. And uh, that's gonna take time for you to figure out where the best place is for you to put stuff. But as a healer, I think this is a pretty good uh, starting point. Like, you don't have to stick with this. I will, um, as I said earlier, put this in a download link in the description so you guys can grab this and play with it. But um, I'm not gonna ever say that this is what you have to use. I just want to encourage you guys to um, mess around with uh, this. Because I showed you how to move stuff, I showed you how to um, assign action bars, keybind stuff, I showed you how to uh, move your chat boxes. Um, a lot of this takes on now to your own personal um, exploration. You just kind of have to mess with it and make mistakes. And I know I've said that like three times already, but I just have to keep reiterating that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish this up and then we're going to quickly go over um, a little bit more on my party frame um, settings and my raid frame settings and then we're gonna go into a question and answer section um, I took a bunch of questions from my restoration guide I made and a quick little LVI video I made asking for questions so I'm gonna take all of those and I'm going to um, hopefully answer most of them I know some of them I've probably already answered and if I don't include your question it's because I've already answered it um, so don't be mad hopefully uh, you already got your question answered anyway so I'm gonna finish this up and I will see you guys quickly after this dungeon okay so uh, really quick totally unrelated that mage if you remember um, oh he gave me a headache at the end of that uh, it's just people that have access to time warp that don't know when to use it shouldn't use it <laughs> okay uh, but anyway regardless all right so uh, unit frames open that up and we're gonna go to party frames and most of the questions probably three-quarters of the questions I saw and read um, were all about my party frames uh, they want to know how they look like that and how you can get yours to look the same way 
Um, you know, and I'm actually not 100% sure because I've had this for so long and it kind of takes a little bit of explaining because a long time ago, um, I, I had OVUI, but I found this add-on called Skullflower UI, which was an, um, it augmented the way LVUI looked. And I downloaded it, and I tried to make it work, and I ended up not liking it. Um, so I turned it off, but it permanently changed parts of my UI. And one of those things that it changed was my party frames and my raid frames, the way that the bars look. Now, when you um, take my download code for my UI, it will do it for you. Like, you will have the exact same thing I have. The problem is, I don't know how to recreate it. So, I've just kind of been saving it for this long time. Um, th these are all the options I have for it. Um, there are so many to go through right now that it's. I'm going to save this for the slideshow at the end of the video when I go through everything. Um, but that I, I can't really tell you how to do it because I don't know how, um, which is why I encourage you guys to grab the download links for my UIs. Um, let's look at raid frames real quick. Um, basic orientation, dimensional values, how I have them oriented. Uh, Heal prediction I really like because it shows you what your heal is going to do. Um, it's not necessarily big for Resto True, it's because everything is uh, hot related, but I think for a Holy Paladin that would be kind of fun. Uh, range check, they gray out when they're too far away from you. Um, it's not ideal for druids because of affinities that you can take and a legendary that you can get so if you have the increased range affinity your balance i believe it is um they will be gray but you can still reach them so that's something to note um is there a coloring option maybe i don't know grouping displaying player all that crap so um to stress again i don't know everything about this add-on and i probably never will um, so, go explore, i tell you again. Alright, that's enough of my UI, um, we're gonna jump over into a question and answer section. Um, it's not a very large list, uh, most of it's been answered already, but in case it hasn't, we're gonna go over there. So let's, uh, let's bounce on over. Okay, so starting out with a question and answer, I'm um, going to start with a really basic question I saw, but um, how do you get the basic tree form? Not the tree of life, but just the basic Trent, treant, however you want to say it. Um, it's actually a tome that you can buy in your class hall. Uh, the same vendor that sells you your class hall armor set will also sell you tomes um, that allow you to learn Kind of like old glyph stuff like uh woodland creature and uh the trent form so yeah that's where you grab that second question do you use only lvy or also another add-on such as shadow and light and the answer is i only use lvy it's pretty much the only um visual modifier i have besides uh details obviously for my damage and healing and uh, yeah that's about it um i tried messing with shadow and light once but i you know, I didn't really need it. I, I'm really satisfied with what I have right now, and I don't really have an interest to go and change it that much. Third question, how do you configure your spell buff on you and your target? Now, I'm going to assume that you're talking about my heal over time effects, and I could be wrong. Um, and if I am wrong, let me know. Um, but um, that's what I went over a little earlier, the little tiny... Um, squares, the little colored squares like purple for rejuve, orange for wild growth, and green for your regrowth and your life bloom. Um, that is set up by default by LVUI and you won't need to mess with it. It should be good to go from the fresh install if you are playing Restoration Druid, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not actually sure how to set that up. I never actually had to go in and mess with it because it was already there. But I hope that answers your question. Another. Um, you might have also been asking about aura bars, seeing durations of the decaying bar above my health frame and my target's health frame, and that is simply an option in itself within the LVUI menu 
um, you go to your unit frames, select either your player frame or your target frame, and then when you pull down the drop down menu on the right side, you'll have an option that says aura bars, and in there you can configure all of the options to fit what you're looking for. So those are the two possibilities I can think of from that question. Next, um, a breakdown of what add-ons you feel are an absolute must with LVUI and how you set them up. Um, and they were talking about things like weak auras, click, um, mouse over macros, voodoo, uh, voodoo, however you want to say it. And the answer is I really don't use any of them. I don't use weak auras, although I probably should have or should should use them. Um, but for the content that I clear, I'm not pushing realm first. I'm not crazy high end. Like I'm not looking for that. Like I. I have a raid group and it's relaxed, laid back, we just have fun and we're not looking to push some crazy progression. So I don't really have a use for weak auras, especially setting up my action bars the way I have them. Uh, it makes it very easy to track cooldowns and buffs and all that stuff, so I really don't need to worry about it. As far as click, uh, the add-on click so you can click to cast certain abilities, I don't use that either, I just use mouse over macros. Um, which I explained in my uh, Druid guide. So if you don't know what that is, head over to that video and I linked the actual macros in the description of the video so you can simply copy and paste them into your game. <laughs> all right, fifth question. And this one is actually not really related to Warcraft at all. It's simply, how did you record this video? And the answer is, I have a NVIDIA GTX 680 graphics card. And with the... Um, software that comes with that, you get an option called Shadow Play, which is a built-in screen cap program with the graphics card, and that's what I use. I don't mess with DX Tori or Fraps, I just use the built-in Shadow Play, and that's what it's called. So if you Google Shadow Play, it'll pop up and you can read all about it. Last question for today would be, do I have to choose between 5-man healing and raid healing, or can I just take a middle way and take a little bit of both of the main stats? Um, right now, stats are in a weird place, and they're about to change drastically. So, I'm not sure I can give you an educated answer um, to where I would be satisfied with what I would tell you. Um, we're starting to lean away, me personally, I'm starting to lean a little towards mastery and crit over haste. Um, I know mastery is great for um, dungeons because you are able to maintain many many hots on each person because you only have five people to worry about whereas in a raid you are maybe two hots per person maybe three if you're bursting um, but in dungeons you're maintaining uh, two rejuvenations regrowth wild growth four or five hots and with the changes in 715 if I read them correctly, and I'm going to stress this, I may have read this wrong. This may be completely incorrect and I might be making an ass out of myself. But with the changes I read, they are removing the three hot cap on our mastery. So it will continue to stack after that. And if that is the case, I cannot see how anything would be better than having mastery for five mans. But I still think crit is probably going to be, crit and haste are probably going to be the raid stats you're going to want to go for. Me personally, I really haven't healed that much lately. I've kind of transitioned to completely balanced and I've also been playing my mage a lot. I've been loving arcane and I'm really looking forward to 715 to uh, get that overpowered talent. Literally it's called overpowered, go google it if you don't believe me. That's it for the Q&A, it's pretty short. If I didn't answer your question, that means um, it was already answered earlier in the guide. Um, if you feel like your question was not answered, I would really like to stress this again, please join my Discord server. If you are in my Discord, I can talk to you in person. I can communicate with you uh, voice to voice. I don't have to type to you through YouTube comments. It's so much easier to get a hold of me. And I even can go and game with you and help you out, okay? So please, if you have a question, hop in my Discord and get a hold of me there. Now to finish this off, um, two things are gonna happen. Uh, one, I'm going to play a slideshow of all of my options in LVUI. Basically, it's going to just be a screen cap. I took the menu and made it really large, covers the whole screen, and I'm one by one gonna go through all of the important option menus in LVUI so you can see the settings I have. 
And the point of this is going to be to pause it on a screen you need to see. Because I don't want to make it really long. It's going to take, this guide is going to be long enough without uh, me making a ridiculous section of the guide just being freaking options in a menu. So it's going to go pretty quick. So I want you to pause it on a screen that you need to see and you can adjust your settings from there. After that's finished, we're going to really quickly go over one, how to update LVI, uh, two, how to import the um, profiles that I'm going to be providing you, and lastly, a little recap on what we discussed today. All right, so let's head right over to the slideshow. As soon as that's done, I will see you guys over at the update and profile importation. All right, be right back, guys.
So now we're back on our level one Orc Rogue. We have a completely bone stock LVY uh, setup right now. Um, so what we're gonna do first is the import of the profiles that I provided. Um, so what I want you to do first is click the link in the description. It's going to take you to my Dropbox profile. You're going to see a file called Aries LVY profile.txt. You need to open that and it doesn't matter which one you select. There is a very long string of code for my healer UI and a very long string of code for my DPS UI. Now, it doesn't matter which one you pick, just pick one of them, copy all of the code in one go, then you're gonna come back to Warcraft, you're gonna do slash ELVUI, open up the menu. You're gonna go down to this profiles option and you're going to go to import profile right at the bottom. You're gonna click that and you're gonna get this big empty window pane. What you need to do is simply copy the code from the Dropbox link in here, and it should pop up profile name Laundry Storm Reaver. That's my mage, that's what I made this profile on. Um, and if it doesn't, don't worry, but it should pop up like that. And you're going to hit import now. And it's gonna ask if you wanna name this something else. So I'm going to name this Stab, er, cause it's a rogue. Then hit accept and close and close and there you go you have my ui it even changed the shading of all the bars so you should get the shading for the party frames raid frames health frame target frame all that good stuff and that's how it works really really simple now for is this key bound is it still on e i'm gonna set this key by really quick character specific one all right now we can kill stuff while i talk um, so the last part is uh, updating your add-on. Now you can do this through the client that Takui and LVY provide for you. Um, I haven't done that and I'm not sure why I haven't done it. I've always done it the manual way where um, you just go to the website, the download page, which I will make sure to link in the description since this entire tutorial is based around it. Um, but. I just go to their page and I download the newest version of the add-on and I install it manually, which means I go into my WoW folder, my interface, and then my add-ons and I install, wow, this doesn't really hurt him. Um, I install it, um, or I copy all of the new files into my add-ons folder and you replace the old ones, so this will just update it. Um, I don't know if that would cause any harm to currently set options, it may. I have never seen it happen, but it's possible, so I don't know if that's the best way to do it. But I don't have any experience with the client updater, so I don't want to tell you guys to do that since I honestly probably don't know what I'm talking about with that, but that's the way I update it. So a quick recap as I stab this board to death, um, we went over basic uh, what is LVI? Then we talked about how to move things, how to set up a brand new UI if you're not using my profile, if you want to do it all on your own, how to move things, how to do a few different options to make it a little easier, such as the LVI button and the micro bar that they hide. Um, then we uh, talked about my UI a little bit and we went over why I have things where they are, uh, especially for healing. Uh, it's really important to have a good UI for healing so you can see everything you're doing. Um, then I showed you a quick slideshow of all of my options, um, played some sweet beats so you guys could watch all that. And we just went over importing the profiles I'll be linking you. So that's pretty much it for my tutorial on LVUI. Now, I understand that more than likely I probably missed something and there's gonna be questions, you know? And I've already said it a bunch, Discord is a really great way to get in touch with me if you do have questions or if you just wanna hang out, totally cool. But um, I'm still really new to this whole tutorial thing um, and it's, it's kind of spooky in a way to do because if you get something wrong, um, it's kind of, a bad feeling. Um, like uh, in my Restoration Druid video, I stated that you want to let Life Bloom expire and then redo it, but apparently, if you reset it um, with less than four seconds remaining, you get an instant bloom. And I didn't know that. And putting um, incorrect information in a guide really sucks because I didn't mean to do that. And I do apologize to everybody who um, didn't. Uh, who found that error in my video and I, I am very sorry and I will try to do better research next time. 
But I'm having a lot of fun doing this, and your guys' feedback is awesome. I love to see all the comments, and I really love talking to all you guys, and I'm looking forward to doing more stuff like this. Um, as far as the next video, I'm not quite sure uh, what what I want to do. Um, I'm not very well versed enough um, in my own mind to make another class guide at this point, especially with 715 on the horizon. Um, so many things are going to change, and I'm going to need time to play. Um, a class before I can make a guide on it, especially with all those changes. Um, I had thought about doing kind of like my own personal WoW story, and me and my best friend, how we started like playing and like where I've come with progression and rating and like how I started because there's some there's some funny shit I did that I did not know was uh, stupid. Um, but I mean that's an option. I'm willing to do more tutorials provided I have enough time to fully learn and explore what it is that I'm going to be doing a tutorial on because I don't re I really don't want to give false information. Um, so I check that out. We are level two by killing pigs. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm really really happy with uh, this video and the last guide that I put up, and I've been loving it. Um, I would love to just, even if you guys don't have questions, I would love to talk to you guys in Discord, maybe uh, run some dungeons, Mythic Plus, whatever, um, just let me know. And any feedback you guys have for this video would be greatly appreciated. Let me know where I could improve, what I could do different next time. And that's it. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you next time.